Quavo has come under fire from Chris Brown for supposedly dating his ex-girlfriend Karuch Tran. Welcome back it's your host Nancy Brown. If you are new here make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. The dispute between Quavo and Chris Brown dates back almost 7 years, yet it still doesn't seem to be close to being resolved. Additionally, it appears that for the first time in their tumultuous past together, this rivalry is being expressed in wax. Furthermore, in Freak, a song taken from his most recent full-length album, the deluxe edition of 1111, Breezy took aim at the rapper. He raps on the cut, alluding to Huncho's affair that began their entire argument with Brown's ex-girlfriend Karuch Tran. Moreover, this makes it quite evident that Chris Brown's hostility for the Migos as a group transcends past escalations. Freak bitch, she like Casamigos, not the Migos. Prior to this, Quavo and the R&B singer had a very one-on-one -on -one relationship or, if you include the Georgia Natives Basketball Challenge from 2021, a two-on-two -two match. Fans will not be pleased with casting doubt on Takeoff's legacy, as a group member, but they now have to take Offset into account. Although Brown hasn't explicitly stated any of this, these implications paint a clearer picture of the situation. Despite spending the weekend together, Chris Brown and Quavo's long-standing problems haven't been resolved. Quavo and Chris Brown have been at odds for a long time. Everything most likely stems from the singers and his entourage 2017 meeting with Migos. Even if the animosity hasn't exactly remained that high throughout time, there is still a lot of animosity. The two most recent arguments between them occurred in 2021 and were sparked by two Instagram story posts. The posters debated who would cook for whom in a basketball match, but it doesn't appear like either artist ever follows through on their promises. When the two appeared together at a recent Paris Fashion Week show, the feud was recently brought back into the public eye. The two were placed next to each other by someone who didn't seem to know their past. Though nothing particularly notable appears to have happened between them during the occasion, videos of them went viral online. Brown, however, then used social media to remind everyone that there are still negative feelings. Can't pick who you sit by. F all that gross sh Not finna fumble my bag for little Brown said on Instagram. In the comments fans question how they even ended up next to each other at the show. Whoever did the seating is messy asshole, one of the top comments on the post jokes. Other comments show how few fans even remember that the two were beefing in the first place. I'm today years old when I found out they had beefed the most liked comment on the post reads. Brown was seen with other rappers during fashion week besides Quavo. Additionally, he ran into Gunna at an Amiri performance. Not long after her separation with YG, Brown was also seen hanging out with Saweetie at a basketball game last week. Funny Marco's interview with G Herbo and Southside went viral with many social media users accusing the duo of being rude guests. He recently had a far more pleasant conversation with Chris Brown, who asked him about the viral interview. According to the Virginia native, he reached out to Marco to ask why he didn't fight back when the duo began to bully him. Why are you let G Herbo and him be like that? <laughs> he asked. The comedian explained that once the interview started to take a turn for the worst, he felt as though there was nothing he could do to stop it. Because I was just like in the mall, like, damn, like this happening, like, damn. He adds that while it was all going downhill, all he could think to himself was, damn, this is happening. So you just letting light-skinned niggas just bully you and shit. Though Brown didn't seem convinced by Marco's explanation, he has previously stated that he didn't respond during the interview to keep things professional. I was upset while it was going on, he revealed once the interview gained some traction. It's like if you was in a car wreck, you can't stop it. But I understand I got a job to do and one thing about me, I respect people on my show. He continued, noting how he didn't want to stoop to their level. Luckily, he says that he at least managed to pick up a few things from the experience. I didn't want to match the energy. It's so many L's I took on my journey I wish I could show I don't hide anything, Marco explained. So I feel it was only right to put the episode out myself. And just learn from that episode and move on. Thank who support me it's a mindset thing. So I hate you. <laughs> yeah I know. He really nah, my son. For media employees, not every interview is going to be a fantastic success. Even while some may be awkward, some will be combative. Stupid ass shit. And we need that money back when we finish, that's our payment. And some will be relatively dull or unremarkable. Bro, how many kids do you got? Got one kid. So none of these are yours? Wait, what? The interviews rarely take the brunt of the public's ire. Hey, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, bro. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Hey, hey, shut the fuck up, dude. Oh, it's right. simpler to criticize interviewers than their more renowned interviewees. But a recent incident in which funny Marco was yelled at, humiliated. Oh, and made to feel uneasy by his interview subject Southside. And G Herbo is calling a lot of things into doubt. I understand a lot of y'all mad about the interview, Funny Marco wrote on social media on Monday. I was upset while it was going on. 
But I understand I got a job to do and one thing about me, I respect people on my show. I didn't want to match the energy. It's so many L's I took on my journey I wish I could show I don't hide anything. So I feel it was only right to put the episode out myself. And just learn from that episode and move on. Thank who support me it's a mindset hey, let's get it. I'm giving you more respect than you deserve. So it's like I'm coming. This comes days after he hinted at his next interview being with Jada Pinkett Smith. It goes without saying that there are many arguments in favor of and against Southside and G Herbo's actions in this gray area. But one thing that stands out in these films is how uncomfortable and shut down funny Marco feels, and that's never a fun or enjoyable experience to go through. The three were hopefully able to work things out in private and at least part ways amicably. However, the absence of any mention of this reunion in Marco's letter to the fans is a clear sign that it didn't take place. Both hip-hop musicians are likely to continue working on new tracks without giving this any thought. This might be a lesson rather than simply a disrespectful bully action if people actually bring it up and it leads to an understanding between the three. Check back for more information and the most recent updates on Funny Marco, G Herbo, and Southside. That's it for today, thanks for watching. Tell us what you think in the comment section and most importantly subscribe. See you.